Now, if what you have to understand about the, the telencephalon or the hemispheres of the brain is that they're, they're first of all bilaterally symmetrical and they generally control different functions of thought. Now, I'm not telling you it's 100%. Neuroscience is more complicated than that, okay? But in general, the left part, the left hemisphere of the brain is uh, what governs logic, analytical thought, and scientific and mathematical thinking, and also linear thought processes, okay? Physical world tasks and details, being able to break things down and analyze them, all right? So this is taking things apart, breaking them down into smaller components, and analyzing the pieces. That's what the left brain does. You could look at it as, you could look at it as a series processor, okay? It has to go into this part first, then here, and then here, and then we could spit out the output. A linear process, like a series processor, okay? The right side of the brain, the right hemisphere, uh, governs or generally facilitates and makes possible human creativity, our emotional makeup, okay, all the emotional dynamics of the human being, holistic thought, being able to see the big picture, big picture thinking, pattern recognition, and then things like compassion, nurturing, care, okay, um, ethics to a large extent. And I would say ethical thinking comes from a, a balance between the two, as we're going to get into. Now, if this left part of the brain here becomes chronically dominant, the masculine part of the brain, and again, I'm putting these symbols here. This is an ancient uh, archetypal symbol called the blade. It's a simple upward-pointing triangle. And this downward-pointing triangle is an, another ancient archetypal symbol that is, was referred to in the ancient world as the chalice, the cup, etc. Okay? And you know, this was a rudimentary phallic symbol, and this was a rudimentary womb symbol representing the male and the female, or the masculine and feminine, more accurately, components of the consciousness. The idea is to keep a balance between these two. When we have a balance between the two, that's when we're operating on all cylinders, so to speak. That's when real consciousness and pattern recognition is developed. And that's when real morality and ethical considerations are also created within the personality, within the being. If this part of the brain is chronically dominant, the left part of the brain, okay, what happens is the, the right side of the brain is, is imbalanced. It's not really functioning uh, at a higher level, okay? And the, the limbic brain will actually suffer that effect, okay? It will also start to shut down. So you will have a lot of left brain patterns going on and a lot of left brain processing going on. But if that's all that's happening and we're not using this part of the brain it, it equally, the R complex of the brain is what essential um, executive functions are going to be routed to. We're going to be living from the R complex in a kind of stimulus response only mode instead of living from a holistic uh, brain balanced mode, uh, which, which is when, when we're in that balanced state, the neocortex, which governs higher order thinking and makes higher order thinking and ethical thinking possible, is what rules the personality, okay? Now, conversely, if the right side of the brain is chronically dominant, so let, let's put it this way. The left side of the brain being chronically dominant, you have the controller. That's the, ma that's the master mentality. The, the right side of the brain being chronically dominant, that's the slave mentality. That's the I won't stand up for myself and I'll just accept everything the total new ager, in other words, okay? So this part of the brain, if it's chronically dominant, the opposite happens with the structures of the brain. The R complex will shut down. It will suffer, okay? It will not work properly, which the R complex is necessary. It makes you stand up for yourself when you're under attack. Again, it's the fight-flight response. In a dangerous situation, you've got to know whether you're going to fight whatever's attacking you or whether you're going to get out of dodge and run away. Okay, that's a survival mechanism that's necessary when there's danger. So uh, when this part of the brain is chronically imbalanced, the R complex gets shut down, people freeze essentially, and they don't stand up for themselves and take action. What they're being, what's happening is they're being ruled by their emotions. And again, the, the limbic brain governs all emotions, positive and negative. So that's compassion and that's fear. It's any possible human emotion. 
the, the, the midbrain is what's ultimately facilitating that emotion in the physiology. All right? So if this part of the brain is chronically dominant, the opposite happens. You go into slave think, you shut down, you freeze, you're ru ruled by the emotions, and you don't stand up for yourself. So, the neocortex of the brain has two hemispheres. The left brain largely facilitates logic and scientific thought, while the right brain hemisphere largely facilitates creativity and compassion. When both hemispheres are in balance, the neocortex acts in its proper role as the executive command center of the whole human brain. And that's when true intelligence is born. Now, true intelligence is a concept that I think more people really have to understand. People have equated intelligence with intellect, especially in the Western society, all right? Intellect is not intelligence. Let me say that again. Intellect is not intelligence. Intelligence comprises more than intellect. Intellect is left brain understanding. True intelligence is holistic understanding with the right brain included in the process, the nurturing, compassionate, creative, and intuitive sides of the consciousness together with the intellectual aspect of the consciousness. And you can see this in the word. Intelligence, right? Intella is where intellect comes from, okay? And gens, G-E-N-C-E, -E, comes from the Latin verb genere. Genere means to generate or to create. So it's the creative aspect of the personality or the right brain. So intellect plus creativity, logical thinking plus nurturing and compassion, that's real intelligence, holistic intelligence. And most people in our society are not in holistic intelligence. They're in one form of brain imbalance or the other. So let's look at how this manifests. If the human brain's left brain hemisphere becomes chronically dominant, the R complex will take over executive function of the brain and the person will become ruled by selfishness and base desires. And they will develop a personality that is based in domination and control. Conversely, if a human being's right brain hemisphere becomes chronically dominant, the limbic system will take over executive function of the whole brain, and the person will become ruled by their own emotions and develop a personality that is based in submissiveness and naivete. Okay? The, the slave think mentality. 